Hello everyone and welcome back to the Knit California podcast. This is episode 8, I believe. Um, my name is Leslie. I'm known as Knit California here on YouTube and over on Instagram. Uh, we are doing a full podcast episode. I have not filmed one of these for I think a month now. Um, so a lot of what you're going to see, I've got one finished object that I'm wearing, um, I've got like an almost finished object, and um, one work in progress that's actually an old work in progress, so if you've been watching for a while, you will recognize it. Um, I've got a couple new yarn acquisitions, and I'm going to talk a little bit more just about like yarn buying and kind of like... The thoughts that I've been having recently, like over the last month, um, since I filmed last. And yeah, we're going to go from there. I, um, I bought an external microphone and I'm using it for the first time today. So hopefully you won't be hearing um, that annoying noise from my camera, like focusing in and out anymore. Um, I tested it and I couldn't hear the noise just like watching the video back on my camera. Um, but we will see. If it is still there, I apologize and I'll have to like figure out something else. I don't know, maybe... Okay, the sound might... <laughs> the sound might get a little louder. I just like moved the microphone like closer to me and farther away from the lens. So we'll see. It's kind of like an experiment, but I'm also going to film the whole video just like this. So whatever. Anyways, so yeah, I didn't expect to go a full month without filming, um, but it just kind of happened. I kind of got in like a little bit of a rut, like knitting wise and creativity wise. I wasn't posting very much on Instagram. Uh, obviously like didn't film anything. I think a lot of it had to do with the heat. It was like really hot the last few weeks here in Temecula, Southern California, um, and I think that really impacted me. We went on a little vacation last weekend, so that was part of it, um, although that really helped to relax me and kind of like get me back into a good place with my knitting, so that was really nice. But yeah, I, I'm coming back. I feel like I have a sort of general plan for like what I want to do um, knits wise in the fall and like coming up next. So I'm happy with where I'm at right now. Um, but yeah, let's, let's kind of get into it. So we're going to start with what I'm wearing. This is my finished object. Do -do -do. Um, I'll put a photo in so you can like see it better, but this is my finished Moonset tee. Um, this is a pattern by Ozetta. Her name is Haley Smedley and she goes by Ozetta um, on Instagram. And I bought this pattern on Ravelry. The yarn that I used is Sorella yarn. This is classic sock um, in the colorway Velvet. It's from the 2021 Fall Tonals collection. So really like interesting where uh, today's the end of August. We're coming up on the beginning of September next week. Um, and I know the new fall tonals are going to be coming out. So it's kind of funny. I've, you know, just finished a garment in last year's fall tonals and the new collection is going to be coming out. Um, I also still have like down here, all of these are last year's fall tonals. I loved that palette. Those colorways were some of my favorites. So I do have a sweater planned for those. I don't know when I'm going to make it. Uh, it'll definitely be next year sometime, maybe. Maybe the year after that. Who knows? But <laughs> anyways, so okay, the pattern. Um, let me get my notes. Okay, so for this pattern, I knit the size extra large. It's the one, two, three, four, fifth size um, in the pattern. The finished bust circumference is 46 inches and I was able to block this out to that measurement so um, I was happy with that. I have a bust size of about 40 inches so that's about a six inches of positive ease that we're looking at here. Um, the pattern 
is recommended. Let me see if ease is recommended in the pattern. I think it is. I think it's about four to six. Yeah, four, four inches of positive ease is what's recommended. Um, in the pad, in the pattern photo, it looks like maybe there's a little bit more than four inches. Um, but the other piece is that the recommended yarn in the pattern is the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, which is actually this yarn that I have. It's a wonderful yarn. Um, it feels great. I've actually have not knit with it yet, but I chose to use this Zorella yarn, which is a 100% superwash merino wool. So a little bit different than like what's recommended. So I think that's where some of the like, like optics like look looks different from my version versus what it looks like in the pattern. Um, I started this project back in December. This has literally been on the needles for like eight months. Um, it was put on hold several times, but this is like to date my longest garment that it's taken me to finish. Um, and basically what happened is I was working on my Maddie cardigan, which I will show you, excuse me, which I will show you later. Um, and I got to a point in that where I like couldn't take it with me somewhere we were going or I wanted to like put that on pause for a little bit. Um, and I didn't necessarily want to cast on anything new. I have two whips just like that were sitting around. Um, and so I decided to pick this one up because I like finally, where it was at, I just like put it on. I put it on like stitch holders and tried it on and I realized I only had like five more inches left to go. And I was like, I just need to do it. I just need to like get it done. Um, so I did. I put a handy dandy row counter on my project. I figured out, I think it, for this pattern, I think I was doing um, 10 rows per inch. And I just marked out like how many more rows I needed and I used my row counter. I counted every single row. After 10 rows, I would move a little marker on my counter from like, I started at five inches, so I had it on five. And then I did 10 rows and then I moved that to four. So I knew I had four inches left. And I finished it. I finished it while we were at the beach um, on our like little family vacation and I tried it on while we were there and realized I needed to do a, a final one more inch and that was a little disheartening but I'm really glad that I did because it fits the fit is better the length is better with that one inch um, and now it's done and it's off the needles and it's <laughs> I cast this on in December right before my brother's wedding and so uh, I'm just like happy that it's finished. Um, all of that <laughs> to say that when I cast this on back in December I was not as knowledgeable about gauge and needle size and how I knit compared to how I am now. Um, after knitting this, the my hot pink souffle tee, that like really taught me a lot. And so if I had known what I know now back in December, I would have known that I am a tight knitter and I should have gone up however many needle sizes um, for this piece. So I did knit this in the recommended needle size, which is a three... 3.25 millimeter US size 3 needle um, and I think if I had gone up even to like a 3.75 half half in millimeter half a millimeter yeah from two three whoa from 3.25 millimeter to 3.75 milliliter milliliter gosh millimeter here we go, back on track. I think it just would have not taken as long, first of all, because I think my row gauge would have been a little bit larger. 
Um, I think the fabric would have been a little bit nicer. It's a little dense, like, and that's not to say it's a bad thing, but I think just overall it would be like a slightly larger garment. Like it's, like it fits, but it's like snug on my arms, um, you know, and I you know, probably should have like made the sleeve circumference a little bit bigger. Um, but like the photo and the pattern makes it look just like a little bit more looser on the body. Um, and even like, well, I don't know. I, I'll put, put another picture up again, but the body of this is like relatively loose. Um, but I think that's kind of where the material choice like comes in. I think the pure silk would have like draped a little bit more versus this wool kind of like hugs in a little bit, just the nature of the fabric. Um, I don't know, but, so I, I probably, if I had, if I knew what I knew now back in December, would have gone up a needle size, um, and then I probably could have made the same size, the extra large, um, or if I was going to use wool again, like, maybe I should go up another, like, actual size to the 2XL, which would be a 50 inch bust. Um, and then I wouldn't necessarily need to like block it to that full 50 inches. Maybe it would be at like 48, excuse me. And I think, I don't know, I just think it might have a better fit overall. It's not that the fit is bad, it's just based on like what I would prefer to wear. I guess right now, I just more prefer that kind of like oversized fit and feel a little bit versus the like tight on my body feel um, and that's totally a personal preference so anyways um, all in all like if it's fine so just saying what I might want different in the future or if I had thought about it beforehand <laughs> but that's fine um, the other thing that I will say is, so for the yarn itself, um, this is a hand dyed yarn. If you've been here for a while, you know that I really like Sorella yarn. Um, she's one of my favorite hand dyed yarn dyers um, that's out there right now. Um, but I, I do have like a tiny bit of disappointment in just like how this turned out. So I used three skeins. Um, for this project and when you look at the photo again I will <laughs> put the photo back up um, it looks like I've got two different colors on the top half and on the bottom half of this garment um, the top is definitely like a little bit lighter and that's the top was actually two skeins of yarn um, and then the bottom where you can see where I've like faded it so you can see like a little bit of stripes in the middle and then the darker color on the bottom I'm just a little disappointed in how that looked I guess like obviously with hand dyed yarn everyone knows this you know your skeins are not the same color um, but I just wish they had been closer to the same color I guess I don't know um, this yarn like <laughs> we had some issues just in general with the yarn um, I left this project this was months ago now but I left this project um, on the couch and one of my puppies like got a hold of the yarn it was all like caked up like this it was all caked up and then I don't know I went somewhere I, I think I just like went to the bathroom and came back and it the yarn was everywhere like it was wrapped around all our chairs like from the couch like around the coffee table like under my desk out the dining table and like outside and I was like oh no <laughs> so there was a long time of me trying to like untangle it and get it back into a ball um, I had to turn like you know three quarters of a skein which is what was left into like multiple balls so I think about now like if that hadn't have happened 
I could have had more yarn of this like top color like it would have gone farther and then the transition wouldn't have been like right in the middle I don't know but it is what it is um, just throwing it out there that just like a little disappointed in kind of what that looks like but um, I got a lot of sweet comments on Instagram of people saying like you know it looks like the ocean and like waves and you know the ocean transitions from like lighter to darker the deeper it goes so um, I do agree with that and I think that's a really cute way of looking at it so I'm ha I'm I'm going to learn to like it basically is where we're at so let me see if there's anything else um, I would like to say about this. Oh, the construction of this um, top. The construction of this is super interesting. Um, it's very similar to like a drop sleeve, drop shoulder, like sweater. Like a lot of the construction of those, like you start with the back panel kind of like knit down past the armholes and then like come over the top and like connect and then go in the round, whatever. Um, it's, it's based loosely like on that type of construction. Um, this was the first of that type of construction that I had ever done. And then there are parts that are like a little bit different than like I think your typical drop shoulder construction, um, especially with like the neck the neckline, the neckband, um, and because it is this v-neck and it's got this like, you do this as you knit so you don't have to come back at the end and like pick up stitches and knit the band here, which is like really nice <laughs> to not have to do that afterwards. But yeah, there were some parts in the pattern where I was like trying to visualize how this is going to work and what's going to happen and I just had to like do what the pattern says and trust it. Um, and every time I did that, it turned out totally fine and how it was supposed to, but it's definitely an interesting one. So, um, and I have talked to some other people about that say, and they've said the same thing. Like it, it wasn't quite as intuitive, just like reading through the pattern, but you follow the pattern and it works. So yeah, I don't know. Just wanted to say that. Um... The last thing I have, I'm looking at my Ravelry project notes, so if you're ever interested in like coming back and seeing this, this is on Ravelry now uh, with some of these notes, as well as the yarn I use, the needle size, and what size I made. Um, and the only other thing on here is that if I were to make this pattern again, I would love to make it in the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, um, just because I have a lot of things that I want to make out of that yarn, just like a lot of patterns that recommend it, and I think it would be really nice. So, that's that. Overall, um, I've seen a lot of Moonset tees out there. Um, let me... Yeah, there's almost 200 projects on Ravelry um, of this tee, so... It's a good one. It's a really good pattern. So I would recommend it. Um, make sure you, you get your, you know, needle sizing and gauge and whatever figured out, but I would recommend it. All right, moving on. That was, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes just <laughs> talking about this, but okay, moving on. Um, my half almost finished garment is my Maddie cardigan. Yee. Can you see? So it's, I'm calling it like half almost finished because like the majority of the knitting is done. Um, it looks like, like if this were just a regular pullover sweater, it would be done. But it's not. This is going to be a cardigan. Um, and I'm going to seek it. And that's... <laughs> That's why nothing has happened yet. That's why it's paused. Um, the next instructions in the pattern call for the steak, and I'm mentally not prepared for that yet. So, but I finished the body and I finished the sleeves. Um, one thing I will say is it's too late at this point, but 
I knit this on a five millimeter needle and I should have stuck with the 4.5 that I did my gauge swatch on because my row gauge is huge and the yoke of the sweater like ends right where the color work ends and you can see like how much sleeve is like afterwards like half the sleeve is the yoke and usually that's not the right proportion <laughs> for a sweater um so it's just when this is in cardigan form I don't think it's going to be an issue like the armpit is going to be a little low but like it's going to be a cardigan so if I'm wearing it open and not buttoned which I don't wear cardigans buttoned usually anyways it's going to be fine but next time when I make a colorwork pattern or I would honestly love to make this pattern again I, I think it's beautiful I think there are a bunch of like yarn color combinations that would be great um, I will definitely go down a needle size but um, yeah the only like I would love to say that the knitting is done on this but it's not because once I seek it I do need to knit the button band um, and like add the buttons and stuff so that's why the knitting is not done yet but it's close it's so close um, I need to reinforce the steak which okay I just I just made a post about this on Instagram this morning um, because my last like my whole grid is all blue from this sweater and like some reels and stuff and I was like I need to get some new colors on my grid so I posted a picture of this um, and I said in the post like I'm scared like this has been on hold because seeking is the next part in the pattern and I'm like not ready yet um, I also mentioned that I don't have a sewing machine so I can't do like a sewn reinforcement and I was like asking if anyone had like any recommendations for crochet reinforcement or like um, I've seen also like you can felt a reinforcement on your like steak stitches right here in the middle and the designer of this sweater oh I don't think I said that this is the Maddie cardigan um, by Kristen Drysdale she is at Scandy work on Instagram she has commented on like all of my photos and videos that I've posted of this pattern she has been offering me so much encouragement and so much help along the way um, she's just incredible. Um, and so in this post, I was like, I'm scared. <laughs> That's why I haven't done it yet. I'm scared. And she just commented and was like, don't be scared. Um, she also recommended, like, if I don't have a sewing machine, she said the crochet reinforcement will be a little bit too bulky for the button band, um, on this particular sweater. And so she recommended hand sewing the seek reinforcement and she linked me to a video that she has on her website so I'm gonna watch that um, and I would love to take the advice of the designer um, and so while it may be a lot of work I think hand sewing will probably be the best way to go and like I've put so much work into this already right like we all know my color work saga. Actually, you might not know that yet, but I'm filming a whole video about like the color work of this. Um, it's on Instagram too. You can see just like, this was basically my first color work sweater. And so actually that's not true. My second color work sweater. Um, my express yourself from last year's knit collage knit along was my first, but I felt like this was this was the first one where I actually like tried to learn as much as I could about color work like before and while I was knitting it so um, yeah I think I got really lucky with the other sweater because it was like a bulkier yarn so there was like less color work in general in the pattern but anyways I digress um, I've spent so much time on this and I want to do the secret I don't want it to like fall apart because that would just be like tragic <laughs> so I'm gonna listen to what the designer says 
Kristen, I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna hand sew the steak after I watch the video. I don't think I'm gonna do it today. It might be a next week thing. <laughs> um, but I will. So, that's where I am with this. Um, I think I also didn't mention the yarn that I use for this is the Le Petit, uh, Biche, Biche Bouche Le Petit Lamb's Wool in the colors light pink violet and white. Okay. I love it. I love it. There's issues with it. There always will be issues with it, but it's really pretty. So I'm happy with it. And I think this is just like, I just think this is something that I'm going to wear like a lot. I can wear this to the office because fun story, I get to go back to the office two times a week now. I'm not happy about it, if you can tell. <laughs> but I can wear this to the office because it's always cold there. And just like with my jeans and it'll be super cute. So that's where I am. Um, this will probably be my next finished object. Because my one whip that I'm working on, if I finish that before I finish this, then you'll know I've really put off the steaking for a long time. So, there we go. Alright, um, now to show you my one whip that I've really been, since I finished this, I've, I've turned back and focused on this. Um, you have seen this on the podcast, but it's been a little while. So I will reintroduce you to my sweater number 15. Gosh, I love this so much. It's longer than the last time you saw it because, um, again, I, <laughs> I put this on pause and really only had like five to seven inches left on it, on the body at least. Um, so this is the sweater number 15 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, and the yarn that I'm using is the Knitting for Olive, uh, Merino and Mohair held together. Uh, these are both the shades Dusty Aqua. They're gorgeous. Gosh, I love these colors so much. They're the same shade, but like, can you see how like different they actually are? And then together they just make this this gorgeous color and if you look really closely you can see both colors like both strands in there it's just so pretty so obviously it's an all over cabled sweater the sleeves are also going to be cabled but I have I'm on my last round of the cable here at the bottom and then you end on that cable round um, and then you do a twisted rib uh, ribbing for an inch and a half so I'm gonna do that my my goal for today is to like get to the ribbing I don't think I'll finish the whole inch and a half of ribbing tonight because I really dislike one by one ribbing <laughs> Uh, it's really hard for me and I'm thinking twisted rib is going to be um, like especially not fun um, so I think I'll start that and then see what happens but then then I'll probably pick up the neckline neckband um, and get that finished and out of the way that'll make this look great um, and then I gotta do the sleeves so probably about half half done with this sweater maybe I don't know what do you consider when you finish the body but you still have two sleeves like how far knitting wise do you think you are in the pattern I don't know <laughs> but overall really happy with this this kind of leads me into just like talking about where my knitting feelings have taken me recently. Um, I got to this point where I just felt like I was so caught up in 
passing on and buying new yarn and like more and more and more and more and more. Um, and the last couple of projects that I did like before this, like my cottage core crop and my summer souffle, the summer souffle especially, um, I pretty much just like worked on those projects until they were done and like didn't really work on anything else. Uh, the summer souffle took me like a week and a half to finish just like only working on that. Um, and that really like made me feel good. I don't know if it was just because of like how quickly it took me to get it done or like really what it was, but it kind of has led me to want to try to do that more often. Um, I guess, you know, some people call it, you know, monogamous knitting, where you're only working on one piece at a time. Um, and I'm sort of doing that right now, like, sort of not. I do have two works in progress. I have my Maddie cardigan, and I have my sweater number 15. Um, but I, I finished the majority of the knitting on my Maddie cardigan, before I picked up this and I finished it and then I didn't pick up my sweater number 15 until I had finished this um all of that to say I just I had like all of these works in progress and I just really got into the like mindset of like I want to just like get these finished um and then I just kind of want to start fresh and I'm planning a whole another video where I talk through my like fall and winter knitting plans. Um, the list is long <laughs> of sweaters that I want to make, but I've also been really inspired. I think this idea has been percolating for a while since I started watching um, Natalie of Knitty Natty, and she this whole year has been kind of like on a journey and has been challenging herself to completely eliminate her yarn stash um and every time i like watch one of her videos i get really inspired and i look at my yarn stash and i'm like okay i don't really want to completely eliminate my yarn stash right now where i'm at like maybe in the future that is something that i will want to do but right now it's not but at the same time, like, I do feel like I have too much and I want to start reducing it. I want to start using all of this yarn that I've bought. It's like, I get into this cycle and I, I still have new yarn to show you, just by the way. So <laughs> I haven't forgotten about that. Um, very ironic. I'll tell you the story at the end, but kind of when, I'll just tell you now. So I was like, talking a lot about this on Instagram stories and like the same day or the day after I can't remember I get this box of yarn in the mail that I had like pre-ordered and it was just like I don't really want to be ordering new yarn right now like I have too much yarn it's making me feel bad blah 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 and <laughs> then I just get this new box of yarn in the mail and I'm like well <laughs> There you can see my problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I was just like, this was one of my thoughts was like, I sit here on the podcast and I show you like, this is my new yarn. I love it. It's so beautiful. I already have a project in mind for it. I'm really excited to use it. And then I put it in my stash and I'm not going to use it for months, for another year, right? Um, and that's where a lot of these yarns are. I'm looking at this specifically. This is probably going to be one of the first things that I cast on. Um, and a lot of yarns in this drawer, this box specifically, um, I already have plans for. And um, so I want to... I want to get going on those. I want to start using the stuff in my stash. I want to stop buying as much. I don't want to put myself on a yarn ban. And in fact, like, 
this today that I'm filming this is the day that um, Explore Knits and Fibers Ireland 2.0 collection is coming out and I think I think I'm gonna buy two sweater quantities like worth of yarn from from tonight um, I've been trying to like narrow myself down to only one um, but I don't think it's gonna happen I think I just need the two <laughs> um, and I'll leave it at that for now I'll talk about that more like when the yarn comes in in a couple months so um, but yeah so I don't I don't want to put myself on a yarn ban but I do want to stop buying as much if that makes sense so and like all of this really to say is just I want to start using all of this beautiful yarn that I already have um, and then once you know once I've used a lot of it then get more right <laughs> there's never going to be a shortage of beautiful yarn out there um, this is what I've been telling myself and like yes all of these beautiful yarn dyers like they dye up these one-of-a-kind colorways that you can only get in like the current collection and then you'll never see them again but it's like when I'm let's say I did use up like my whole stash what like if I didn't buy any more yarn for like this could probably last me two years three years maybe there's a lot of yarn here in two years time let's say these yarn dyers are still going to be dyeing beautiful yarn like and there is always going to be something else that I want so I don't know that's just the way I've been thinking about it um so I have um have like seven or eight <laughs> sweaters <laughs> kind of lined up for fall and winter uh I don't think I'll be able to actually complete that many like in fall and winter like at the end you know ending out this year and beginning 2023 uh, but I'll get there as many as I can and really see like how much my mind changes because I fully fully reserve the right to change my mind on any of this uh, but that's kind of where I am right now so and that, that whole, like, that was a lot of, like, thinking and when I was, like, kind of in my down creativity feelings, like, all of those feelings were starting to come up, uh, and it was hot, obviously I mentioned that, so this was all kind of happening at the same time, and I was just, like, I need to, I was really wanting to cast something new on, and I was, like, I'm gonna stop like stop yourself right there um, finish the projects that you already have cast on because finishing projects makes me feel so good so it was like you you're already halfway there like just finish it um, and like you love this sweater like I love working on this sweater and I put it on pause for the summer and like it is still hot here it's the end of August like it doesn't get cold in Southern California until like November, December, January. So like, yes, it's hot and I'm working on this, but I love working on this sweater. The yarn and the pattern together, just like beautiful. So uh, I'm just doing what I love, this one. And when this is done, you'll see what's next in the next video. Um, okay, so I do want to talk about some acquisitions. All of that, all of that to say, I bought more yarn and more yarn has come, so. Classic me talking about stop buying yarn and then a yarn delivery shows up. Um, okay, the first one I'm going to talk about, this is actually, this actually just arrived yesterday. And... Okay, that noise is probably terrible. Um, you know, I mentioned I have to go back into the office now two times a week. It's a long drive. Um, it took me two hours to drive home on Thursday, and there weren't any accidents. That's just 
how long it took. But anyways, um, a f couple months ago when I was back in the office for like a meeting, um, I was really cold and <laughs> I posted on my Instagram, uh, help me please, I need to make a cardigan to wear to the office, what are your favorite cardigan recommendations? And I got a bunch of really great cardigan recommendations, I picked one out. I'm gonna make the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit, and the yarn that's recommended for that is what I got. Is this is a this isn't this ball isn't pretty. Let me get another one. The yarn that's recommended is Sandness Garn Double Sunday, and I really want a black cardigan. Um, this color is actually called. Sailor in the Dark. It's number 5581. And technically, I think this is a very, very, very dark blue. But in some light, it, like, in some lights it looks blue, but, like, even I'm looking at this now in, like, the natural light from my window, and, like, at quick, like, you really have to look at it to see blue. At quick glance, it looks black. Um, and I'm gonna be pairing it with the Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair um, in the color Midnight, which is also black, so black on black on black. Um, this I actually got from a knitting friend. Um, Haley Knit Weekend was de-stashing this a couple months ago, and I was like, I need that black mohair for my office cardigan that I'm going to make. Please, can I have it? And she was like, yes. She sent it right over. Um, and so this has been like, this project has been on my mind for a while. Um, and the mohair has been sitting in my stash. And I finally just like bit the bullet while I was uh, at work the other day. And was like, I need to get the main, main color yarn for this. So um, this is Double Sunday Sandness Garn. It's... So it's only 50 grams, right? Let me see. Where does it say? Yes. These, these are 50 gram balls. Um, what size am I going to make? I don't know if I wrote this down. I didn't. I didn't write it down, but I did the calculation. I needed like 12 or 14 balls of this. Um, so I went on to Ravelry and I was like, who sells this yarn and who has that many in stock? And I ordered from Blazing Needles, which I think is in Utah. I think it's in Utah or it's in Texas. I'm not sure. Aro from Aro Knits and Pearls talks about it all the time and I can't remember if it's because it's in Utah currently where she lives or if it's in Texas where she used to live and goes to visit frequently. But anyways, that's that. I so I don't know if this I haven't decided yet if this will be my next cast on. It should be because I want to wear this to work as soon as possible. But it might not end up being my next cast on because my fall and winter knitting plan video will tell you what I want to cast on first from all of this yarn and one of those might be the next cast on and I might end up casting them both on, on this at the same time and working on them at the same time even though that totally goes against what I was just saying about working on one project at a time again I fully reserve the right to change my mind okay anyways so that's that first yarn acquisition Second yarn acquisition. Oh, I forgot. I got some. Okay, actually, let me show you. I got a couple like extra things too. So, um, Explorer Knits had her ice cream social yarn collection that launched, and I didn't buy any yarn from that, but I couldn't resist the cutest sticker ever. So I bought a sticker, and I love it, like, come on. It's a little yarn ice cream, and I love yarn, I love ice cream. It's this beautiful pink color that I love, so 
Yes, we got that. Um, my Instagram friend Rachel at Rachel is Knitting has launched um, stitch marker collections on Etsy. And uh, I messaged her, she was like showing them all on Instagram, like all the little sets she, she had. And I was like, Rachel, I need like a build my own because I really want one waffle, one gummy bear, and one sparkly pink butterfly. And she was like, Leslie, I will put that together for you. <laughs> so she did. So I got, I got one waffle, one pink gummy bear and one sparkly pink butterfly and I love them. I uh, had waffles for breakfast this morning so my pancake game is real bad. I'm really bad at making pancakes but a waffle maker does it all for you so I have discovered that I'm good at making waffles. <laughs> but anyways I love these. I think they're super cute and adorable. And I will link her Etsy site along with everything else that I talk about today down below so you can get some for yourself. Okay, and then last but not least, uh, I have already ruined the packaging, but let me show you. It's so beautiful that I have to like show you. I don't even know if you can see. Oh gosh. This like tissue. Oh! boy <laughs> okay that was a candle it's fine um this tissue paper is like artistic and beautiful this is my woolberry fiber co coastal collection that i ordered yarn from um woolberry yeah it's just beautiful okay so let me show you what I got. I guess we'll start with this candle that has fallen from the sky. Um, I got the Coastal Wax and Wool Candle. Um, a coastal collection just like really speaks to me because I love the beach and the coast so much. And she said this candle, you know, had coastal scents. It doesn't say what the scents are, but mm, it smells so good. It smells so good. I can't, I don't know how to describe it to you. I'm really bad at like describing scents, scents. Um, but it smells so good, very coastal-y. And I'm not really like the biggest candle person, but I needed it, okay? Um, next I will show you, I got this stitch marker set too. Uh, they're so cute. They're little beach themed stitch markers. So there's a sun, a sand dollar, a starfish, and a little shell. And again, I love them so much. The beach is one of my happy places. So this, I think the sand dollar is my favorite. And the little swirly, sh I don't they all are. I can't choose. I can't choose. They're all my favorites. Look at all these together. My knits are going to have such cute stitch markers now. Okay, um, and then last but not least is the yarn. So, I got three skeins of Beachcomber in Berry Merino. This is a 100% Superwash Merino base. Uh, 100 grams is 400 yards and it's this gorgeous pink color and I'm going to use this. This is slated to be a salty air tea. So it's so pretty. This is like one of my favorite pinks. It's like a rosy, dusty, rose gold kind of color. And it's really pretty. So love that and then I also got me this is sandcastle so I got sandcastle on DK and on 
accessory. And I'm going to use this to make the promenade blouse. Um, it's like stripes of DK and then like stripes of Surrey. Um, or I think it's supposed to be mohair, but I kind of, I, I feel like the Surrey is like less see-through in general. It's like a little bit more fuzzy, so I think it'll be less see-through. Um, and it's softer, so I'm going to try it with this. But I, uh, I think, like, again, this is like a, a peach, peachy pink, beige, taupey pink, variegated color. Um, and when you look closely at the Surrey, like, you can see all of those colors in here as well. And um, it's just gorgeous. So... Excited about this one, but again, I don't know when I'm going to be able to cast this on. Probably next year, unless I change my mind about all my uh, fall and winter knitting plans. So stay tuned to find out. Um, and that's really it. So um, I do want to share that... Um, the video that I posted right before this is a blocking, kind of like a blocking tutorial video, um, that I did for my Moonset tee. So I walk you through the whole process of what I did to block this, um, and then at the end I lay out, like, a couple of my, like, top tips and tricks, um, and I show you all the tools that I use and recommend, and I, like, link them all. So, um, I'm really, really proud of that video, um... And I hope you watch it and like learn something about blocking. Um, and then the next couple videos that I have planned, like I mentioned, the fall and winter knitting plans video. Um, I haven't filmed it yet, but I like think about it every day. So I'm really uh, excited to film that one. And we're kind of going to like go through some of my yarn stash. We'll be sitting here, but like maybe at a different angle so you can see things a little bit better. And I'm gonna like pull stuff out to show you so really excited that's gonna be a fun video um, I have a video like already in the works um, that needs to be finished as I finish this sweater so talking about like color work um, kind of it'll it'll go through this steak once I finally do that um, I think I think I'm going to be able to film the steak. I need to like figure out a good setup so that like I can get the camera on it and not and like still seek it without <laughs> cutting something wrong. Um, so that will be coming in the future and yeah just um, I'm hoping to like actually stay up to date with podcast episodes now too. Uh, hopefully I won't have like a as long of a break as we did between the last one. So I think I am just looking around. I think that's it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and continuing to support my channel. I really appreciate it. Um, if you're not subscribed already, trying ultimate goal is to hit 1,000 subscribers, but right now I'm really close to 500. Um, so hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and leave a comment. You know, all the fun things. Um, go follow me over on Instagram, too, if you're not already following me over there. And, yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Enjoy some knitting time, and uh, yeah, love ya. Happy knitting, bye.